Hi there, welcome to the Upcycled Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So what am I doing in my garage? You might wonder if I'm actually doing a quilting video, but um, I'm out here because I've decided to hand quilt my quilt rather than use my sewing machine to do the quilting. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know I've been working on a t-shirt quilt for some friends of mine. And while this video isn't strictly an upcycling video, it is a more economical way to make a quilting frame so that you can do your hand quilting. At least that's what I'm hoping. I bought all the materials and I'm going to attempt to cut them and build my own quilting frame. So this video is part four of my t-shirt quilt project and if you missed the other videos you can get to those in the comment section of this video. So like I said, I'm hoping that this will come together pretty easily. I've got my sketch drawn out, some measurements, and I'm ready to do some cutting on the PVC pipe. So just to get you caught up to where we are in this video, in my first video I talked about designing and sketching out a plan for the t-shirt quilt. I did a rough cut and then laid out all my pieces to make sure that I liked where they were. In video two, I stabilized all the pieces and also made some two-part blocks just because, uh, so I could use more screen prints. And I also did the final cutting with the rotary cutter and a cutting mat. In the third video, I dealt with a couple of problem blocks to fix some flaws, pen marks, and different uh, problems with the quilt blocks themselves. And then I sewed all of the pieces together and also layered them with the backing, the batting, and the top layer and pin basted them together. Before we start today's video, here's a quick recap of the tools and materials that I will be using to make my quilting frame. And if you're interested, I'll put some links to some of these items in the comment section of this video. So here's my design sketch. There are a few different designs out um, on the market if you look for them, but this is similar to one that I found uh, for sale for, it's the same design and it was on sale for $94. So I have purchased all the, thing, all the parts that I think I need for this for just under $40. So it's about half as much if you're willing to put in the work. Um, I've got a couple measurements here and then I've done a little bit of math to figure out how to fit all of my pieces on the three pieces of 10 foot one inch PVC pipe that I have. Like I said, there are a lot of different designs out there but um, and, and you can use different connector parts, but for my design I'm just using the T shape and the three corner connectors. So I have four of the three corner connectors and six of the T square shapes. And this is just a quick look at how I did my measurements. Like I said, I have three pieces that are 10 feet long, which is 120 inches. So I just calculated my length, like this particular piece is a leg, then I'm cutting another leg, which leaves me 56 inches. Then I can cut my 36 inch back bar, which leaves 20. I'll do a 13 inch bottom side piece and then I should have a seven inch piece left over. So I just took my three 120 inch pieces of PVC pipe and calculated out how I was gonna cut all of the pieces that I needed. All right, so my general plan, so this, these represent the three 10 Blanks. pieces that we have. So I have to cut very specific things out of all of them to make it match. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. And then, so this bar is 26 inches, so I'm thinking that these two are 13. Thinking? But I, I think they're actually gonna end up longer because I don't think they go all the way into this T thing. So I think what I wanna do is I wanna cut. I think it goes a line, you see? Right, so I think it's gonna add about an inch. 
which is okay. If I have enough, I'd just as soon make this 27 instead of 26. But anyway, what I'm saying is just because I don't know exactly how much bigger it's going to make it, I want to cut two pieces of 13 from one piece of the PVC pipe and yeah. then fit it together and actually measure it and see if it's, see how long it is before I cut these pieces. You know what I'm saying? A couple of thoughts on cutting the PVC pipe. You probably could use a handsaw and it would work, but obviously it's a lot easier if you have some kind of power tool, table saw, or something like that. Uh, I will say that it is very messy. There's a lot of, uh, you, if you're cutting wood, you get sawdust, but you get a similar uh, fibers of the plastic that come off of the PVC pipe and they have a lot of static. So it is kind of a messy process to cut the PVC pipe. Here's a look at all the cut parts and the connectors that I need to assemble my quilting frame. To assemble the frame, I'm hooking the t four cross bottom crossbar pieces together with two T connectors, and then I'm attaching the two pieces together with the bottom crossbar. And then I'm adding the last four T connectors to each of the ends of my sidebars so that I can add the legs to my frame. Now I'm noticing that my frame seems like it's going to be a little too high for at least the height that I'm sitting at now, but uh, to go ahead and finish off the frame, I'm using the three corner connectors on all of the top corners and then attaching the top part of the frame to the legs. And since I'm planning on actually sitting on this couch to do the quilting, you can tell that the I've made a terrible miscalculation miscalcul on the height of the table. So I did end up having the hubby help me, but he trimmed off about seven inches, I think, of the leg. So I don't know why I was so far off on my measurements, but you can see that it's at a much better height once the legs have been shortened. It should fit kind of comfortably in your lap. So here's a look at the extra pieces that I was able to cut from some of the leftover PVC pipe. I was able to get four three inch pieces, four six inch pieces, and two seven and a half inch pieces. And these are good for using to adjust the height of the table and also the tilt of the table. So because I'm using the T connectors on the bottom as sort of the feet for my table, it's easy just to put the extra extender pieces inside the PVC pipe to adjust the height or tilt of the table. And then of course, once you're finished with the frame, it's very easy to take apart and it doesn't take up a lot of storage space once it's disassembled. Here's a look at the final measurements for all of the pieces that I used for my quilting frame. So here's my quilt, and here is my quilting frame, and I'm going to attempt to get the quilt onto the quilting frame. So I have some fabric straps on my frame because I was thought I was going to use them to keep the extra part of the quilt from touching the ground. They didn't end up working that well. You can really just kind of keep the quilt folded on the part of the frame that you're not using to stitch. But the important part of the video here is the last piece that you need for your frame are snap clamps. And they are just 
pieces of plastic that fit over the PVC pipe and hold the quilt or fabric tight across the frame. So here's a closer look at the snap clamps. They come in a lot of different uh, lengths and there are a couple different styles. Most of them just have this rounded shape that fits around the PVC pipe. The ones that I found for some reason had this flat edge which made it a little easier to get off of the quilting frame. It's a little easier to grab a hold of. But basically they're very simple to use. You just slide them on uh, wherever you need them and tighten up the quilt. So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to check back for our next video when I will be adding or doing the actual hand quilting.